Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a super useful skill for 3D printing, how to cut a 3D model in Creality Print 6. Whether you've got a model that's too big for your print bed, or you just want to split it into parts for easier printing, I got you covered. Stick around, and by the end of this video, you'll be slicing models like a pro. This channel is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. Whether you're looking for PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, or 3D printing services, PCBWay.com has it all. Offering fast delivery, high quality materials, and affordable rates, they're the go-to solution for hobbyists, professional engineers, and innovators worldwide. Prototype the easy way with PCBWay. Okay, we've all been there. You have a cool little alien head and you want to blow it up. 250%. That's pretty cool. But you want to print it on your Ender 3. Now it's just a little too small. Yeah, you can probably twist it a little bit, make it fit. But I'm going to show you a way to make this fit relatively easily by cutting the model into separate plates. Let's go ahead and select the model. And we're going to come up. And we're going to select this icon right here under the word prepare. It's our cut icon. And right along this plane that we're looking at is where our cut will happen. Now we can change the angle on that. Go vertical this way. We can do it at an angle. Uh, we can put it back. Change it here. Do just about anything we want. It's 3D after all. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this so it's coming right down the center of the neck and through the back of the head. Right like that, 260 degrees. I'll leave it alone. And that would be nice. Um, you're going to see it's the upper part blue, which matches over here in our dialog box. The lower part being the pinkish purple. But it's not going to give us a way to really align the pieces real well when it's time to uh, go ahead and glue them. So let's come back in here and hit Add Connectors. And we got a lot of nice choices here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it to dowel because I don't want a plug. I want a pin. So our choices are plug, dowel, or snap. Um, we'll get to those later. But just for the beginning here, let's go with dowel. And I'm going to change the shape to a hexagon so it's easier to orientate. The depth, I'm going to make that 12 millimeters. Uh, my size, yeah, I'm going to go overkill and I'm going to go, uh, let's say 20. It's bigger than what I need. But then what I can do is come here on the back and I can click where I'd want them. Um, in this case, I'm only going to want one. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this out and I'm going to go back into my add connectors. Leave everything as it is hexagon 12 millimeters deep, uh, 20 millimeters in size, and I'm just going to click one. That's all I need. It's just for alignment purposes in this one, anyways. Click the confirm connectors button and everything's looking good there. Hit perform cut and pretty nice. Now we'll have to add a plate. A yeah, two two plate uh right. Take the first, which is the back of the head, we'll put that over on this plate. What we'll do is rotate it so it fits the plate. I think that might do it. Yeah, we'll probably rotate it a little bit more. The back, well, I guess it's actually the front of the plate, it's like it's on there, right? Still tight, but we can go ahead and we can fit this. You know what? If we can fit the back, we can definitely fit the front. So, first thing for the front, I'm going to take the plug and I'm just going to move that, the dowel pin. Head, go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to use my auto orientate. There we go. Okay, now, obviously, it's not sitting on the bed real well. So, again, we can fit the back on, on one plate. We can definitely fit the front. 
And there you go. That's pretty much cut. Uh, well, I won't say that's pretty much the cut, but this is just one of the amazing things you can do with the cut command. So let's go ahead and dive a little bit deeper and see what else we can do with this. Okay, so let's go ahead for this next example and drop in a testing primitive. You can use a model. I just going through it. I'm using a cube. Um, I'm going to change the scale. I'm going to make it 50 millimeters all the way around. And again, you can use any model you have. Uh, go ahead and click on it. And I'm going up to my cut once again. And we're on uh, planular, planular, however you want to say it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this. And you can see right there what it's going to do for us. We got a dovetail cut. Let's run through some of the other settings. Uh, I'll try not to waste a lot of time on this. Now, just like before, uh, it puts a, a cutting plane on there. And you'll see where it says Z25. Well, if we grab that, that's telling us on our 50 millimeter cube, it was going to put it at the center line of it, 25. And you can see as I move this up and down, it's changing. I can either drag it up and down, or I can go ahead and just type in a number. And that's all there is to that. Now, let's look at some of these other things. The depth on our dovetail, you can see as we increase that, it gets bigger. Make it smaller. I'm going to leave it at 7. So that will change how big our dovetail, the depth of it is, the height, whatever you want to call it. I call it the depth, I'd stick with that. For our width, see how it makes it narrower when I go small, wider as I go larger. Uh, let's go with six. That should be a good fit. The flap angle. I'm going to leave that at 60, but let's just go ahead and play around with it for a quick second here. You can see how it flaps back and forth. Okay. If you get anything above 90, it's not doing a whole lot for you. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that at 60. The groove angle is pretty cool. Now what that is, in this direction okay maybe you don't want it to go straight through you want it to taper so you get a nice snug fit as you increase that number that value you can see what it's doing it's forming a point there now for my example i'm going to leave it at zero. Zero is going to be straight through that seems to work um now we got this next section is upper part lower part obviously that's color coded to the parts on the model so what's going to happen is it's we're going to keep when after we cut it when we put uh click perform cut it's going to keep both parts if i get if i click that it's going to delete the pink so we're going to leave them both at uh, keep it's going to place the blue one on the cut which means that when it comes down on the bed plate, this piece here, the bottom of our dovetail will actually be resting on the bed plate. Let's go ahead and we're going to cut this. And as you see, we got one model. What I always do afterwards is I'll, I'll come up here and I use my arrange options. Looks like a tablet of some sort. Just hit arrange and it splits them out. So you can tell this was our piece with our groove. And when we come over here, got the dovetail. Now, obviously, we don't want to cut that or print that the way it's oriented. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to auto-orient that. And that's a good position for it. If this one will go the same direction. Orient that. Yep. So that's, how, that's exactly how I would want to print those. They're both vertical. Uh, it's not going to require any supports. It's going to go right up. And when you put the two pieces together, after they're printed, you just slide the top into the bottom. And that's all there is to it. Uh, let's move on to some other examples of what we can do with this before we wrap this up. Okay, so I have another 50 millimeter cube on here again. And let's go back to cut. We're going to leave it at uh, planular, just like we did before. But this time we're going to look more at the connectors. Let's zoom in here. Click Add Connectors. 
and we've already used the dowel when we split the, the alien head. So let's leave it at plug. And right now you can see it's showing us uh, just the pink side. And that's the side that our plugs will be in. Now the plug is actually attached to the model. It's not like a pin where you stick it into a hole. This will have a plug on one side and a hole on the other part, which would be the lighter blue. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll see what we have for the styles. We have prism and uh, frustrum. Um, not a big deal. The shapes, we got triangle, square, and hexagon, and circle. Uh, personally, I like something that has a straight edge to it over a circle, unless they have multiple circles. Uh, that way you get your alignment easier. If you have a, just a circle, you can mess up in 360 degrees. Let's go ahead and let's start picking some points. So what you want to do is pick one or more points. And there you can see our first uh, hexagon plug. Let's go ahead and put two in. And what we'll do is change the depth. Now, three millimeters isn't a whole lot, in my opinion. I like to go about 10. Unfortunately, I should have done it before I clicked on anything. But it's just going to change this one. So for our size, um, let's go with 10. So that's a pretty big plug right there. Click on that. Let's see. Change this or not. And and okay, I never actually did it that way before. I always had my numbers entered to start clicking, so I actually just learned something new there. Um, if I add another one, change shape, triangle. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Now, to keep those, let's change it to a hexagon just to be consistent. What we do at this point is Firm connectors. All right. Now we're back to the view that we're used to seeing. And let's perform the cut. Now we're looking at our plugs. And that aside, this here is actually our other part. Can't see the holes there. Unfortunately, the holes are on the bottom side, so you want to be careful of that before you print. Um, let's flip it over. There you go. You can. They don't actually look like holes until you slice them. Let's go ahead. There it is. Pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do another one real quick. Okay, so we got another connector type I want to look at real quick. Uh, let's click on our cube. I'm going to hit cut. Leave it the way it is at planular. And add connectors. Now, this time I'm on snap. I like the snap. They're pretty cool. Go ahead and click a spot. And we'll start setting this up. So I'm at 10 millimeters for my depth. So that's going to be... Basically, the height. See how it grows. I'm going to keep it at 10. The size is going to be the diameter. And when you start moving this too much, it will affect the depth. You notice how my depth changed. So I'm going to change that back to 10. I'm comfortable with 10. I like 10 for my depth. I know they work. Over here, uh, we have a tolerance, and I'm pretty sure I missed these on the. Uh, the dovetail depending on your printer how it's set up and what material you're using you might have to go ahead and set yourself some tolerances a lot of times i'll set um one at point two and the other one at point one and then that way it makes it not totally sloppy but it makes it uh go together easier but still snug enough to hold pretty good. that's something you're going to have to experiment with there's no magic formula for it and what works on a small model may not work on a large model. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's go to the rotation now. And the rotation is actually the angle of the slot. So we're straight up and down. If I go in there and I type 45 for 45 degrees, you can see how it, it turns. If I go 90, obviously it's going to turn more. 
It's going to put that back to zero for now. The bulge, that is the diameter, which I kind of have the size at 10 millimeters right now. But here at the widest point, it's going to be the diameter plus 10%. So I could go down as low as 5% on that. And I can go as high as 20%. I'm going to stick with 10%. Um, there's really not a reason to change that too much. The next one is the space, and that manipulates the gap in between how big the split is. I can go as low as 10% and as high as uh, 50%. Now, at 50%, I don't have a lot of material there. Uh, there's a good chance they're probably going to snap off. So I'm not going to use 50. If I go. The 10%, well, the material is way too thick there. They're probably not going to flex all that much to engage. So I'm going to stick with 20. 20 looks like it's pretty good. Um, maybe 25 would be better. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, I'll leave it at 25 for this particular one. And that's how you would do your snap. Then if you click another one, it's going to use those same settings. And it puts it right where it is now uh where you clicked you can drag them and move them after you have them so that that does work for you but i gotta warn you ahead of time you're not going to be building lego blocks out of the with these snaps now here's something else that's pretty cool let's go ahead whichever one's gray is what the current active one is i'm going to click here in the middle and basically put a third snap but let's turn the button over to plug and you see what it did there. We went right to a plug. And I'm on a prism. I can change the shape. Go triangle. I can manipulate everything like I did before. I can go ahead and add a dowel. Now it looks like it just disappeared on me there. Which I guess technically it did. Let's put that back to 10. Um, I'm going to leave that the way it is. We're going to confirm our connectors. We're going to go ahead and perform the cut. I'm going to hit my auto arrange. And there you can see here's our triangle for our dowel. Here is our piece with the snaps, a hole for the dowel, but I'm missing a hole on this one. And we know where that's hiding. Hiding on the bottom. Flip that over. There we got our holes for the snap, a hole for the dowel, good to go. Place that up and take a quick look. And that's all there is to it. Now you know how to cut a 3D model in Creality Print like a champ. It's a game changer for tackling the big prints or just some tricky designs. Give it a shot. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. I'd love to hear about your results and tips if you have any. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Give it a thumbs up. Smash that bell so you don't miss the next one. Live your life one layer at a time. And please, consider subscribing. I'll see you next time on Pushing Plastic.